Okay, here we go. Computing averages. Sydney Freud's. Come on. You're embarrassing me here, computer. Sigma Freud and prescriptive statistics. Computing averages <coughs> and computing and understanding averages. A means to an end. Chapter 2 has to do with the measures of central tendency, which I think are the most important concept to wrap your head around in order to understand st statistics in general, um, uh, but certainly the ability to uh, uh, <coughs> uh, generalize. And in Chapter 2, we see uh, how to go about uh, computing the mean, which is called average in um, Excel, computing the mode, and computing the median. And then uh, we go over a little bit about how to um, use the analysis tool pack. But we're just going to do a talk through because I'm on my Mac machine today, and so I thought I would show you Mac users um, how to uh, use your um, StatPlus plugin to do descriptive statistics. Um, since the book actually does a very good and detailed step-by-step -step how to <clears throat> of using the analysis tool pack. And then when to do, which measure of central tendency to use? The average. If you ever listen to the Prairie Home Companion, you'll hear um, Garrison Keeler claim that everyone in Lake Wobegon, all the kids in Lake Wobegon, are above average. <coughs> Technically possible if what they are doing is taking the average of, let's say, that's Minnesota, all the uh, kids in Minnesota. Lake Wobegon could have kids that are, are, are all above average. So, But if you're looking at Lake Wobegon kids as a population, that is impossible. So I snuck in a little bit of something there about populations. Uh, <clears throat> averages means, median, moans are known as your measures of central tendency. And and, uh, and that's a good term to, to keep in the back of your mind when thinking about statistics. Uh, uh, what we do in statistics is measure and try to uh, represent kind of what's generally going on. And um, uh, uh, so to make it less of a foreign uh, process for you. Uh, in this chapter, uh, we have three different ways to describe uh, a distribution of scores. The mean, which is your typical average. Uh, you you uh, think of a, of a baseball player, and they've got an earned run average or a um, batting average or something like that. The batting average of, of uh, uh, 400. George Brett got to 400 uh, once a few years back. And um, what that would mean would be one in every four times, four in every 10 times at bat, George Brett got a hit. So, uh, and, they, and they calculated that on an ongoing basis by, by um, you know, dividing the, the number of, uh, of, um, of, of, of at bats by the number of of, of hits. It's a pretty pretty straightforward and simple process. Uh, median is the middle score, and mode is the most common score. We'll go through those each one by one. Uh, <clears throat> now, when we look at um, statistical and mathematic uh, uh, symbols. Uh, that's often a place where, where people um, 
start to really get lost, our eyes glaze over. And, and really when we take them and break them down, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So to read this formula, um, uh, the value on the left side of the equation sign is called in mathematics terms eight x bar. So anytime you see a bar over any value, you just say x bar, y bar, z bar, c bar, uh, foo bar, um, <clears throat> etc. Um, on the right side of the equal sign, you see the sigma sign. And sigma is a, a Greek letter that always means, no matter where you see it in statistics, mathematics, means uh, you better think of adding things together. It's, it stands for sum. So sum as an S-U-M. Uh, and so you add together whatever follows. Um, and then we see X again is each individual score in the group. And then the horizontal line there simply means to divide. So that's that, that slash that we see uh, written uh, uh, other places. When you write it in Excel, it's a, it's a, it's a right-leaning slash, often written in, in um, 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 this kind of, um, of uh, setup. It will be wit written as a... Um, let me put my pen up here. Uh, <clears throat> written as a, um, um, a horizontal slash, so which you often do when you're writing a um, um, fraction out. So it's one half. We often will write just like this. Although when we type it on a computer, it's often typed. Well, it is always typed like that. So, so. <clears throat> um, some of this has to do with with with, uh, with how text is laid out and that sort of thing. So, uh, so what we, we we what we have here uh, is letters that are supposed to represent things in general. So, say for example, um, the um, uh, x is our is our variable. Uh, x is always going to be the variable, and we'll call it um, shoes. So. So how many shoes does a person have? So uh, we've got three people in our group. The first pre person has two. The second person has one pair of shoes. And the third person has uh, three three pair of shoes. So, so rather than saying uh, x bar uh, equals uh, sigma x over uh, or divided by uh, n, um, we would write this as, we'll write it up over here, uh, we'll write it as shoe bar, or actually shoes is what I said, shoes bar equals, and rather than go to this sigma stuff, because remember that means sum or add it up, we'll just put in what, what our actual values are, is 2 plus 1 plus 3 and we'll divide all that, whoops, just nailed my three, by how many there are. And so we have to count, and we can see one, two, three. Um, and that's going to equal two. So the average number of, of um, shoes that these children have is three. So mean is very familiar. Um, I used to just skip over this chapter. This is the first year I've done a podcast on it because I assumed that everybody um, uh, would remember what a, a mean is or an average is, and and the formula for doing it. And I and I found out that I, that was wrong. You know, some people don't use math very often once they get out of school, uh, college. Um, algebra uh, may not have had any, um, uh, and you might have gone to a, sco a school that didn't didn't emphasize um, having that college algebra. So, so the mean in, in three easy steps. Um, you list the entire, this is how to do it in Excel. Um, 
you list the entire set of values in a um, uh, single column, just like I did. Compute by the total, compute the sum or the total of the values, and then divide. And the answer you get is the mean. So here's the exact same thing that I just did, except we're talking about the number of customers. And they're using a much more um, difficult example. Uh, we could have all done the calculation of the mean in our head for the first group. And in fact, I did. So doing the mean in Excel is um, is easier than uh, writing it down. So so in, in this case, we, we see that we do not have a, uh, hey, get back there. We do not have uh, a name for, oh, I've got to turn my pen on before I can write with it. So, so here's my, um, here's the first value. There's, there's no name here. So um, <clears throat> in Excel, I think as I said in the previous podcast, um, you write in your formula where, where you want the answer to appear to you. And up here in the function bar, you'll see that they wrote out the formula. How they got here, I don't know. They could have clicked on the FX, popped up the dialog box, chose average, chose the, the, the range in their box, hit enter or OK, and and it would have popped their, their, their um, answer here. Most likely what they did is they simply highlighted this um, cell down here, cell A5, and started typing in equal sign, average, left parentheses, and then the range, A1 through A3, and then the right parentheses, in the new Excel, you only need to put the right parentheses on it. Sometimes you can just hit return, and it'll it'll know that you meant to put that in there. So, uh, the average function in Excel is pretty 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 easy. Um, now, Excel um, has built in two different types of mean: the the, arith the, the arithmetic mean, which is what you just saw, where you, where you sum sum them together and then um, uh, <coughs> sum them together and then divide by the the count or the number of them um, just a second I've got somebody okay back from my little adventure with uh, house pets um, the geometric mean the moving mean and the um, weighted mean. So you just saw the um, uh, arithmetic mean. Uh, the only difference in Excel from using the um, uh, average or the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean, which Excel causes, calls geo mean, um, is um, using the, the, the formula. So so we go back to our previous um, cell uh, up here in um, uh, the function bar. Instead of putting average there, we would put geo mean. And, uh, and we would probably want to spell it right. Now, I, I just made them all caps. It doesn't matter. Excel doesn't care if you use all caps. You can, you can, you can make G, little e, big O, little m. It doesn't care. Um, but it'll change it to all caps. So uh, so what the um, um, geometric mean does for you is it enables you to compare two different uh, uh, scores um, <clears throat> and um, for outcomes. So, so uh, say for example, uh, you have a test. One is worth um, uh -huh, uh, one is scaled from from zero to one hundred, uh, and another test is scaled from zero to one. Well, uh, 
if you did arithmetic mean, uh, you know, if, if, if we had a normal distribution, um, the, 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 the 0 to 100 uh, average would probably be somewhere around uh, 50. And, um, uh, <clears throat> well, the um, uh, 0 to 10 is going to be somewhere around 5. So we can't hardly compare those two. Although in this case it would be very easy because we could just multiply 1 by 10. Uh, using the geometric mean, uh, we can then compare those two. So what it does is it, it gives you a, a value that it, uh, makes two different averages uh, comparable. So if you got, you know, how fast did my team run the 100-yard dash and, and then also ran the quarter-mile relay or something like that? Compared to the to, to um, um, uh, we could compare to see how well uh, and then make some sort of a you know meaningful comparison. So uh, uh, moving mean uh, is uh, is a type of mean that that we won't get much into, uh, but we will come back to it uh, when we when we. When we touch on regressions later on, uh, because what it does is, is it attracts a, a, um, um, an average that uh, fluctuates across uh, uh, time, so it's a time series uh, measurement. And then finally, a, a, a weighted mean, which gives more value to the frequency of a value's occurrence. So. Um, Reminder of some things that have to do with statistical language. We have the, um, um, in the case of, of uh, a sample, uh, we always use the notation small n uh, to equal the number. And when we're thinking of the entire population, uh, we would use the, um, um, uh, the large n. The average, um, if you've ever sat on a on a seesaw uh, and you were heavier or lighter than the person on the other end of the seesaw, you knew that the person had to move forward or back uh, depending on their weight in order to equalize things. Uh, so you're familiar with that kind of a concept. Um, um, but if you so if you think of, of yourself as kind of a, a of a of a extreme person when it comes to your size. Say you're you're very, very tall and so you weigh a lot. So you're sitting on that seesaw uh, and um, because you're, you're tall and have to weigh a lot, uh, you have to move closer to the middle to um, uh, uh, make it uh, average out. Whereas the person who's very short and very very petite and very light is going to have to move further to the back, and uh, so these extremes will change um, the way uh, the average works. And so, for example, if you have if you have uh, uh, ten students take a test, uh, uh, seven of them uh, get 75s, two of them get 60s. Uh, and then the the other one or two, so okay, two of them get 60s, one of them gets an 80, and then finally um, one of them gets a zero or a one. Uh, that person who did very poorly is going to pull down the entire average for for the for the for the for the crew. So <clears throat> using weighted means, uh, weighted means is is another way to to um, get a little bit more um, um, accurate when you're doing a, um, um, a um, calculation. And, uh, uh, and what it does is it takes into account how many, how many times a, um, a frequency, a value appears in a data set. So, so you have 97 points on a test, and four people got that. Uh, what you would do would, would, would um, um, multiply the frequency by the value and then come down here 
and then average this new value out here as as a weighted average so here they've done it for us the value of 97 times 4 is 388 and so on they've added all these together and then created the the average the total score excuse me and then they've weighted that by by division of by 100 here so it's a calculated score now medians are a little bit different than a an average it's it's it is sometimes compared to and I've done this myself to the median line of a highway so you get the yellow line going down the road this is the median line and that's what it's called if you get an interstate highway you've got two sets of highways this grassy area is called the median anyway I guess I don't know but it's not exactly that so medians are are very susceptible to very high and very low levels so we can take a look at this number which is the median of that range and we can can tell quite quickly that 36,000 is not exactly halfway between 135,000 and 25,000 that number is going to be a little different than that so so but because of the way this spreadsheet is laid out we can see how the median actually works the median is falling somewhere in between here so what the median does is it looks at all the cases and calculates how many of them there are and this case there's six three of which it put on top three of which it put on bottom and the median score is going to lie halfway between these two values so it's the middle point of a set of cases and it is influenced as much by the number of cases and really where they lie and the more than the value of the cases so so in that previous example it wouldn't have mattered if the where did you go I got lost here hold on a second it would not have mattered at all if that was 1 million 135,000 because there's six cases it's still going to be 36,000 and 84 now the mode sometimes when when people first start to really focus on doing statistics they will gather qualitative data such as Republicans Democrats and independents and try to to calculate an average on them and there's there's really no way to do that because because it's 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 not like Republicans and Demons Democrats and independents are a number I mean one you could you could you could conceptualize them on the left to right scale with Democrats on the left Republicans on the right but independents when you throw independents in it you know they don't really fit in the in the middle 
I mean, some do. Some independents, you know, just simply can't figure out if they're Democrats or Republicans. Other independents are just way right of Republicans and way left of Democrats, and they're a whole different thing. Um, um, uh, then again, some are probably just not. Um, what let me sneeze. Excuse me if you were subjected to that. Um, um, so it's the most frequent occurring value, um, uh, regardless of, of, of the value of it. So you, you can do a mode on uh, textual data, such as Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. You can also do a mode on true numbers. Uh, <clears throat> And, and here we, we, we can see um, uh, a sample uh, spreadsheet where the person has had to go through some 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 um, machinations to 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 decide what the mode is. So so they've had to to um, and and you know a lot of times when you when you send out a survey you will get a um, a um, um, value such as um, uh, Democrat, Republican, or Independent as what what gets returned, and uh, and then you have to take your Excel uh, and and using the Control F plus F buttons hit those at the same time. It'll pop up a dialog box uh, which allows you to find and replace. So where this when, when you got your surveys back, this might have said Democrat, but you controlled it and replaced it and, and turned it into uh, Republicans. I'll show you how to do that at the end of this um, um, thing. Now, uh, multi-mode is a little bit of, of, a, of a different um, 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 animal. Um, so, uh, if, if you have uh, um, more than one item in there that has um, um, the same number, uh, the mode doesn't like that. So, what, what the multi-mode do, it'll, it will let you know that, that there are multiple modes. Um, and I, I don't like the multi-mode function. It's new in Excel. I haven't got it figured out. Um, but I'll show you what I think is an easier way uh, to to do um, uh, modes and how to do it if you've got textual type of data. So descriptive analysis, descriptive statistics in the data analysis tool pack, pretty straightforward. Uh, you just hit your tool pack, um, um, uh, go in there and and the easiest way is to click on that little guy right there. That'll get rid of this box. <clears throat> you go, you grab your range, and it can be organized by columns or rows. Excel doesn't care. You also need to decide if, if there's a label in the first row. So if you click this, you got to be sure and click the label as well. And sometimes it's helpful to, to, to click the label, particularly when you're when you're selecting multiple columns or multiple rows that have a label name to them. Uh, and then where are you going to put it? I always put it into a new, new worksheet unless it's a very small um, 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 sample. And then I usually give it a name. So, you know, like DS, uh, whatever, the, whatever it is I'm doing. Uh, uh, descriptive statistics. Statistics of X, for example. Um, um, you can get summary statistics uh, uh, and confidence intervals and all this kind of stuff. Uh, just stick with summary statistics. Hit OK, and you'll be OK. And you'll get something that like, looks like this. Um, um, quick, you know, what does all this mean? Um, what does all this mean? Get it? Um, it means that the the average score for the, this income level is fifty three thousand three hundred twenty four dollars and seventeen cents. Uh, uh, the median income is thirty six thousand. We've seen that before. Um, 
see this huge standard de deviation. Um, uh, that's going to tell us we've got a very skewed um, 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 very skewed uh, sample. And uh, we'll go into skews a little bit later, uh, what, what this all, all really means. Um, and, um, um, and kurtosis, it's, 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 a, it's an oddly shaped thing. If you, if you were to plot that on a histogram, it would look really odd. It's got a, it's got a range of 109,956 from top to bottom. Uh, it'll give you your minimum and your maximum. How much all these things are when they're added together, or sigma together, and then the count, how many items are in there. So it's a lot of information that, that you know, if you, if you look at your typical um, report in a, in a journal, uh, they're going to report the, the, um, the mean, for example. They'll often report the standard deviation. Uh, they don't tend to re report kurtosis or skewedness. Uh, sometimes they will report the range. Um, um, usually, always, they report the count. How many cases are we talking about here? How many numbers? Um, the new and improved just descriptive statistics output. Um, um, So what the, what they they're, they're talking about doing in this particular um, uh, I don't see what they've done with this slide uh, but one of the things that you get and you will see this and I'll show this when I when I do the when I do the stat plus for Mac um, quite often you you'll 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 get um, um, depending on what the format is um, uh, you will get some crazy numbers written in scientific explanation here so. Uh, um, okay, in the old days, um, 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 oh, they deleted the mode. Let's see if they did, in fact, delete the mode. No, they didn't. So, again, every year I get these things from, from the publishers, and there's always some mistakes, and it looks like they're using the same, the same slide. So, um, but what 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 they're what they're getting at in this slide is there's things you can do. The, the standard output in in Excel is Arial size 10. That's pretty small for some of my eyes. Uh, I don't know about your eyes, but all of mine think it's pretty small. Um, for it comes usually things come formatted as as is general. So you want to format numbers as numbers. Um, uh, in this example, they got rid of the mode because there was no mode. Uh, uh, adjusted the column widths, and you can use um, various tables and tables and shading and that sort of stuff to make it a little prettier. So, uh, so whenever whenever doing statistics, no matter how fancy that you end up doing them, this is where you're going to start. You're always going to describe your data, um, both to your audience and really to yourself before you get started. So. Uh, that's uh, descriptive statistics. Now, now <clears throat> let's take a look at, at how we can do that using Excel. In this case, the the um, 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 the plugin for um, um, t uh, Mac for, for Excel for Mac. So there we go. That wasn't too difficult. Let's get rid of that first. We're hitting Control Delete. So I've got three scores here, um, and what I want to do is find some descriptive statistics for all of those scores. So, um, so I come down to my toolbar and I find where I've put my um, Stats Plus icon. If it's still in your um, uh, toolbar, I mean, so it's in your application folders. Um, you might want to pull it out to your toolbar, at least for this semester, because you'll be using it an awful lot. So 
going to be located. Mac puts things in alphabetical order, stat plus, right there. Um, in case you don't know how to do that, you can do that one of two ways. You can just double click, drag it down to your toolbar, which is already there. Or once it's opened, uh, you can right click on it. Come on, come over here, stat plus. You get options, you click on keep in dock, and it'll keep it in the dock until you uh, uh, unright click that. Or you can just drag it over and put it in the trash to get rid of it. It won't get rid of your program, it'll just take it off the dock. A little bit of Macintosh trivia there. Okay, statistics. Now some of this is going to look a little different uh, as I go through the semester because I've got the, the full version of Stat Plus for Excel. Uh, and um, so those of you who run it, if I do a demo and, and you say, oh, I couldn't really do that, uh, let me know. Um, so we have uh, something called descriptive statistics. Well, that's what we want to do. We'll just click on that, and that's what we get. So we do have labels in the first row. You can see that, and we can just come over here, click on that guy, that little uh, thing that looks like a miniature little table, come back over here, and that auto fills our, our geography of our, of our um, statistics. Then we click OK, choose on it for a second, and then it spits out an, an entirely new spreadsheet that has my descriptive statistics laid out in a really bizarre format. So we can see here we've we've got the the count, the mean, the variance, standard de deviation. We've, we've got lots of lots lots of stuff in here, uh, and it's just a matter of going through and deciding what we want. First of all. Those of you who don't read scientific notation are going to choke on that. You're going to go, ah, get me out of this class. I want to go. I want to go do pottery. Um, um, uh, so let's get out of this. Let's go back to our original example here. Um, we've got um, stat plus. We can do this one or two ways. I suggest if you don't like those kind of numbers. You come up to Stat Plus and come to Preferences, and you'll see how it it uh, puts the output. See, I've got the font over here at 18 because that's uh, that's what I want to, for me to be able to read it and for for uh, you all to be able to see it on the on the podcast. Um, um, how many decimal points do I want? Two is the is the standard convention, so that's what I chose. Hide trailing zeros, don't worry about that, leave it clicked. This is the one that gives you the scientific notation. Uh, 1.23 exponent of 4 um, is, is actually 0 0.000123. Um, confidence intervals, 5% is, is a good number to keep. Um, and what to do about missing values, leave that checked none unless you really know that you want to handle miss, missing values in a certain way, and we'll go on that um, get into that later on when we get into more anal more analysis. You can click OK. So we change that. Now let's go ahead and go back to our um, descriptive statistics, and um, it's even got a little shortcut key for it. We click on that. It remembers uh, that we did it last time. We we can do some advanced options. Uh, we can plot a histogram. We can put a normal curve over that histogram. We're getting ahead of ourselves, folks, but it's nice to know that it's here because I will be showing you this when we get to histograms. So, uh, And then the number of intervals. That's a lot of intervals um, for that small of a, a set of data. Um, we'll go five intervals. That's a pretty, pretty standard number. Click OK. And it'll go around and around and around in circles, and it'll give us our output again. So uh, again, we, we, we can see for variable one, all that same stuff, but it's in much more manageable numbers. You know, 
when, when we think of, of, of means, for example, um, uh, where's our mean here? 5.6. Uh, we like that much better than, than scientific notation. There's the distribution with a normal range plotted over it. We can see that it leans slightly to the left, and we'll get more into that later. Here's score two. Again, got all that same information. The mean is 27.6 uh, on that test, or whatever it was. Again, we can see we've got a left-leaning distribution. Uh, and then finally, on the third score, it looks like we've got an odd, very odd distribution. That it's, you know, it's still um, leans a little bit to the left, but we've got a lot of scores here that really do some stuff. So, um, a lot of information in here, mostly for uh, beginning um, analysis. We want to know what the average is, the mean. We want to keep track of the standard deviation. Uh, sometimes we want to know the range, the minimum and the max maximum. Um, um, and um, and there should be the count in here someplace. The count, it's way up here. Uh, so that, and, then, and, and that'll mostly uh, get us to the next step of doing our uh, data analysis. So, and sometimes it's the last step. But sometimes that's what we need to know. Nice thing about Stat Plus is it always opens up things into a new um, worksheet, a new workbook. Um, so uh, if you're going through a number of, of you know, Playing around with your data, um, you can just run Stat Plus again. Uh, you know, what would this be like if I, you know, blah blah blah. You can run that again, and you'll just get a new output. And when you try to close it, you can either get rid of it or save it. And uh, um, uh, and um. <clears throat> so that is chapter two. That's enough for now. I will uh, let you go. And I'll do it one on chapter three, uh, more on uh, uh, very